question for Jim. I was at the show at the old Charlotte Coliseum, the one that's still standing. When you had to get into a cage named Betty Lou, <laughs> do you get warm, fuzzy memories when you think about that match? Also, do you know what happened to Betty Lou? She should be in the museum. <laughs> Betty Lou's getting out tonight, from what I hear. Um, it, it, of course, Dusty Rhodes named the manager cage Betty Lou. Betty Lou is going to be here. You're going to have to be stuck in Betty Lou. Um, it, it, we did that in so many cities. Of course, in, in Charlotte, it was, it, it was, that was the night that they hung it over the ring and it was midnight in a rock and roll. And Robert Gibson was so limber and spry in those days. He used to run across the ring, jump up on the second rope and put his left foot on the top rope and stand up and grab the bottom of the cage and swing it and then jump back down into the ring. And he did that because he knew that I shit myself every time he did that because I hated that. Cause it, but I'm now I'm I'm that far up to begin with in a fucking cage, and now I'm swinging back and forth. And generally, if you'd seen the crew that hauled me up to begin with, you would have you would felt my pain and my reticence at all of this because. I mean, I can't remember specifically which was which, but one night it'd be a chain. And they'd haul me up with a chain and they'd have a winch thing and they'd turn the thing. But some nights it might be a chain or it might even be a rope. One time in Houston was a rope with three fucking guys that worked, I guess, in catering or in the fucking concession stand or they, they were the guys that the maintenance guys. They're holding the rope and they're pulling and I'm going up the farther back they go, right? And I'm like, what the fuck? And I can't, I don't have my glasses on. I can't even see where I'm tied off. But then a rope with that much weight on it, it stretches. And every once in a while, you'd feel it <clears throat> just just enough to give you the impression that this is the end of your your days. And then it would it would stop. And sometimes if they if they couldn't get anything in the ceiling to haul me up, they would bring the the cherry picker. And they'd either put me in the bucket and put me up there, or they'd have the gimmick where they would put me in the cage and they'd grab the cage with the thing and haul the cage up by the crane or whatever. So I think in, in Little Rock one night, I was up in a cherry picker. It, it just, it was fucking ludicrous. And all those times, I think I'm putting my life in the hands of these fucking people. I don't even know if these motherfuckers have a commercial driver's license to operate this equipment. I don't even know to haul a fucking rope. I don't even know if they were documented fucking immigrants. I'm putting my life in their fucking hands. I, it was, it was, <laughs> it drew money. It sold tickets, but, and I didn't like being like being in front of a microphone, stationary microphone. I didn't like being held down. I like to be free.